Hey, what's good, everybody? Uh, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, welcome to I Am Nelson 89. So, if you look at the title, today we're going to be talking about uh, my Spice One uh, CD collection from 1992 to 1997. And for those of you who may not be familiar with who Spice One is, he's an American rapper from California. He's one of the top tier premier uh, artists, hip hop artists from the 90s, man. Mainly within gangster rap, you know, he was one of the he was one of he's one of the top echelon gangster rappers, especially coming from the 90s, man. You know, he, he released a lot of classic albums in the 90s. You know, he was signed to Job Records. Uh, he, he comes from the Bay Area. Uh, he's normally associated with the Oakland hip-hop scene, but he actually comes from a smaller city about 10 minutes away from Oakland called Hayward, which is nicknamed locally as the Haystack, which he commonly refers to a lot in his music. But uh, he's mainly associated with Oakland, mainly because he was discovered by Too Short. And Too Short is the one that really get, brought him out and gave him his break. But yeah, man, Spice One, man, he, he's an awesome lyricist. Uh, he has a very multi-dimensional flow that really helps to keep his uh, his subject matter more interesting because most of his subject matter is just straight up gangster. Straight up gangster, murder, murder, kill, kill, pretty much, man. That's that's really the just of his subject matter. Although, I know in recent years, in his recent music, he started to uh, switch it up a bit and diversify his subject matter, man, but uh, particular this era that I'm about to talk about, you know, as far as my CDs, yeah, it was just straight up gangster rap, man. Uh, no holds bar, pure unadulterated gangster rap. But yeah, man, uh, uh, great MC, great lyricist, and uh, you know, I've been on the kick for a few days listening to his music, and you know how, how I got into Spice One was actually uh, through Too Short. Uh, the first time I heard Spice One was on Two Shorts Get In Where You Fit In album, uh, the song called The Dangerous Crew. That was the first time I heard uh, Spice One rap. I heard of him, but that was my first time actually hearing him rap. And then, uh, this is probably around high school. This is when YouTube had started popping off. I started going on YouTube a lot and finding a lot of his videos and a lot of his songs uploaded on the channel. And... That was how I mainly uh, consumed his music until I was able to locate and find a lot of his uh, CDs. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get into this uh, CD collection, which is Spice One, uh, 92 to 97. All right, so the uh, first album we have is the self-titled debut album, Spice One, released in 1992 on Job Records and Triad Records, man. And this was a... Uh, Man, this was an awesome debut album coming from Spice One. You know, uh, like I said, it's pure, unadulterated gangster rap, man. It's hard, but some great uh, production on here. A lot of great storytelling. I mean, I think this album right here really showcased uh, Spice One's storytelling ability the most. Because every song on this album could honestly be a movie within itself. And then the production that was handled mainly by uh, Ant Banks. And uh, E.A. Ski and C.M.T., man, was it was just a perfect backdrop for uh, uh, Spice One's lyricism and his, his subject matter. Because they this album came out in 92, and I think it was pre-Chronic. I think this album might have been recorded pre-Chronic. So it has that early, old-school, like, West Coast sound, you know, where it had more of the funk samples and the production was a little bit more rougher. If you if you understand what I'm saying, uh, that that's the kind of style, that's the kind of sound it has. It's a very raw kind, of, I guess you could say, kind of underground type production that this that this record has. But I I really enjoy it. And I think it was the perfect fit uh, for uh, his subject matter. And then he really broke out with the song called One Eight Seven Proof, which was a clever a clever song where he takes uh, like. He takes like drug paraphernalia and alcohol and he like turns them into like actual characters and he he tells this whole story of, of like E bottles of E and J and things of that nature being like actual characters in a in a real 
creative story that Spice One put together. It, it's hard for me to explain that song, but I, I urge any of you to go on YouTube and definitely check out the song and listen to the lyrics, man. How he cleverly takes these different types of characters like like E and J and alcohol and all this like guns and drug paraphernalia. And he turns them into these like really cool characters and tells a, a really interesting, unique story behind them. And, and the funny thing, well, not a funny thing, but an interesting thing is that Spice One actually said that that song came to him in a dream. He said that he prayed and asked God to make him a rap star. And he said that he had a dream that night where he was walking, you know, up the block in his neighborhood and he heard a car roll by that was playing his music. And he said something in the dream told him to stick your head in the window to hear the song that made you famous. He stuck he stuck his head in the window in the dream and he heard the first few lines of 187 Proof. And then he woke up. He said he woke up and he started writing. He said, he was like, man, who is EMJ? I got, got a homie. Who, who, who is EMJ? And then he says, okay, that's that's alcohol. So what if I ride, what if I made a, what if I made a line about them? selling drugs on Hennessy Street and stuff like that. And that's how he came up with the whole concept of that song. But a classic song, a very classic song, produced by Ann Banks, man. And, uh, you know, you got East Bay Gangster, uh, which was another hit from the album, which it also starts to, this is where Spice One really starts to display his, like, reggae, dance all influence rap style. It, it starts to come together on this song, but the but the one song where he really fully displays that technique is on One Eight Hundred Spice, where he throughout the whole song he he just spits in in like reggae patois, you know that's how he rhymes the whole entire song. He rhymes the whole entire song in that fashion. And then uh, you have Welcome to the Ghetto, which was another hit single from the album, and it had it included the line. Uh, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto, which this was the source, man. Spice One was actually the first rapper to actually say that line on the song, Welcome to the Ghetto. And that line is what inspired Tupac to actually uh, create that song, I wonder if heaven got a ghetto, which came out years later on his first posthumous album, Are You Still Down? But uh, Spice One was the inspiration behind that, uh, uh, excuse me, of Tupac making that song. He He heard that line. And welcome to the, welcome to the ghetto, and that's what inspired him to write that song. And, and then uh, you have money or murder, which is another great storytelling track. Where uh, it this song is crazy, man, because it it's about like an interesting it's an interesting story about how a simple trip to the liquor store turns into a fight and then a shootout. You know, uh, and the way that Spice One just goes into detail from the moment him pulling up to the store, him getting out the car, to him looking at people not, you know, you know, opening the door and walking in, he just goes into such great detail in describing the story, where you really can visualize exactly everything that's going on, so that's why I said that Spice One is one of the greatest storytellers in hip-hop, and this album was really a great uh, showcase of that ability that he uh, maintains. He would kind of drift away from that uh, on subsequent albums, but I think this album right here was where he really, really displayed that really good ability. So uh, definitely, if you come across uh, the self-titled Spice One album, don't hesitate to pick it up. It's you won't you won't be disappointed. All right, so the next album is a uh, One Eight Seven. He wrote, which is his second album released in '93. Uh, you know, a year later, he's coming out with another album. And if, you, and if you thought that the previous album was hard, this album was even harder, man. Just straight. It's even harder to straight up gangster rap, man. I mean, you can just look at the cover and the title of the album. You already know pretty much what you're in for, man. But this album was another success for Spice One. You know, it had some singles from it, like Dumping Them in Ditches, uh, The Murder Show featuring MC8, which I think that was probably his first... Uh, collaboration with MC8. Of course, you know him and MC8 throughout the years that collaborated with each other. You know, they even made a few collaboration albums years later down the road. You got that song and that, uh, it also has Trigger Got Snow Heart, which was a huge hit for Spice One. Uh, the original version was called, uh, Nigga Got Snow Heart, and that appeared on the Minister Society, uh, soundtrack. But, uh, you know, there was a remix or edited version called Trigger Got No Heart that was released 
alongside MC8 straight up menace. And Trigger got no Trigger got no heart was a huge hit for Spice One. He shot a video for it and everything. And the, and the interesting thing is Spice One, he he was originally supposed to play O Dog in Minister Society. Uh, the Hughes brothers actually wanted him to play O Dog in that film, but his manager didn't keep in contact with the Hughes brothers, so he ended up losing the part to Lorenz Tate. But I mean, you know, things happen for a reason because Lorenz Tate knocked he knocked out that O Dog part. But uh, because he didn't get the part, man, they gave him a, a single off that off that soundtrack, Trigger Got No Heart, which blew up. But you got other great songs on here, like 380 on that ass, which features uh, South Central Cartel, or, or Havoc and Prodigy from South Central Cartel, not Havoc and Prodigy of Mob Deep, but, which is another banger, which I think was produced by Havoc of that group. Yeah, a very uh, kind of mobbed out inspired track, which... Which was really good. It was really good, man. I mean, it's, it's nothing unique, but, you know, they, they pretty much on the album talking about gangsters, you know, guns and shooting people. But uh, you got Mo Mel, which is a very uh, mobbed out type track, which features E-40. Although E-40 doesn't have a verse on there, he's like doing ad libs in the background, talking like doing in between verses and stuff like that. Uh, but my favorite part of the album was when it gets to like running out the crack house. Uh, which was, I believe, was produced by Easki, man. Like the, the kind of smooth, kind of jazzy vibe that that production has, and the way that uh, Spice One is, he's rapping about the, he's rapping about, he's telling a story. He's telling a story of, you know, the police raiding a dope house, and he goes into great detail about the police arresting him, and them like putting the, letting loose the canine dogs loose on him and letting the dogs bite him and everything like that. You know, he inject he interjects a little bit of police brutality on in the song, and you know, from the point from the point of him going to jail and everything like that, great a great story, great story, and a great a great display, another good display of uh, Spice One storytelling abilities. And then you got uh, R.I.P., which is an ode to a lot of uh, Spice One's fallen homeboys that he's lost over the years to violence and things of that nature. Another. Uh, E.A.S.K. produced track, very somber song, not not somber to the point where it makes you want to cry, it has a really good vibe to it, where it just makes you just kind of, it, it would make you just want to sit back and ride to it, or maybe, you know, if you're into it, like smoke one with, smoke one with somebody or whatever, but all around, man, uh, 187 He Wrote is another, it's another great album from Spice One, and I believe Tupac was quoted at one point saying that this is the hardest gangster rapper album ever, but, uh, just all around good album, man, and uh, another Spice One album that you de you definitely should check out and pick up. All right, so the next album we have right here, and this is a bit of a personal favorite of mine because this was actually the first Spice One album I bought. Is uh, America's Nice America's Nightmare released in 1994, and I always liked it, that album cover, man. I hope one day I could find that find a T-shirt of that album cover. I just always thought it was a dope album cover. But yeah, Spice One comes again in 94 with a great record. In my opinion, I think America's Nightmare is arguably uh, Spice One's most complete record. I think it, I think it's a real great blend of the previous two records. Now, you, you, have, you have a bit of the storytelling ability, and you have a bit more of that kind of kind of funky, more funky production that was prevalent on the first album, although it sounds a lot better this time around, because Spice One, at this point, Spice One's got a whole better production on him, man, he's got a better production this time around, but, yeah, I just think it's his, I think, I think it's his most complete album, man, it's just a great mixture of what he had done up until that point, a great blend of that, and, uh, I'm really glad to, I'm really glad to have had this album in my collection, man, it was the first one I bought. And for a long time, it was the only physical Spice One out my head because uh, it was it was the one that was the most accessible. It was the easiest to find. Like all his other albums, you could find them, but they were really expensive. But this one, and and as well as the previous one, one eight seven, he wrote were the most accessible ones that I could find. But uh, I just enjoyed this album a whole lot, and I think that. Uh, Spice One really, I think he just really tapped in 
and he just he was just really in his zone when he recorded this record. And I think I think this song is probably best known for the Jealous Got Me Strap with Tupac. Uh of course I don't know if I mentioned it, but him and Tupac were really good friends. They were really good friends. And uh this is this is probably their most popular song that they that they ever collaborated on. I don't even think this was a single, but it was just such a popular song amongst fans that it's just highly it's just a highly regarded track because I think it's it's really the only it's the only it's the only song that Spice One and Tupac publicly collaborated on. It's if you want to count the "I'm Losing It" song that came out on "Are You Still Down," but that came out after Tupac's death and everything. But it's a very popular song, and uh, they they wrote it because they had a mutual friend at the time who had been murdered, and they wrote that song as more of a dedication and a tribute to him. But uh. Just a lot of great music on here. You know, it got Hard to Kill featuring Method Man, which I thought was interesting, man. You know, East Coast and West Coast artists collaborating. And this is right before the whole East and West thing uh, really took off. I, I just thought that was cool, man, because Method Man, Method Man was early in his career at this point. You know, Wu-Tang had really just blown up. And he, I guess around this time, he had just dropped his first solo album, you know, to Cal. So I thought that was really cool, you know, to see him and Spice One collaborating on a track. Around this time, I just really enjoy to see West Coast and East Coast artists collaborate with each other. And uh, you have, uh, what's a, what's another good songs on here, man? Pretty much this whole album is good, man. You know, Strap on the Side, which was one of the singles on that album. Uh, Faces of a Desperate Man, which was another single. Uh, another song that kind of tells a story of like, you know, homies being, you know, homies passing away due to violence. You know, in the streets and things of that nature. Uh, D Boys Got Love for Me, which gets off the album featuring E40. And this time, E40 actually has a verse on there, which he kills it. And then, uh, my favorite part of the album, though, is when it gets to uh, You Can Get the Gap for that, which is a very, like, uh, G Funk mobbed out track, man. Very eerie. I like the eerie sense that it has on there. And Spice One just comes over there with a killer flow and just, he just murders the track. Uh, Busters Can't See Me is another great, it's another great one. Murder Ain't Crazy is also is also a good one, man. It's a very smooth, mobbed out track, and I just, I just like I just like the way that uh, Spice One sings the hook. And he he comes with a very it's a gangster song. The subject matter is very gangster, but he just comes with uh, this smooth like flow on it. So uh, I really dig that, man. And uh, let's see, uh, give give a G a gag, which features the one eight seven fact, a, a real good posse cut. Produced by Ant Banks, uh, Three Strikes. Three Strikes is another good one, man. I think he, I think he might have produced that one. I don't know. I'm not sure, but another great song where uh, it, it kind of has this kind of like smooth, kind of jazzy vibe to it. But uh, Spice One just comes on the song, and he his flow, man. His flow is just so great on here, man. The way he just rides the beat, and he just, he just. Coming in with his with his typical subject matter, man, but his his multi-dimensional flow and the authenticity of it, it just makes it so much more interesting. And then you got the song "You Done Effed Up" at the end, which is a diss track to Pooh Man, uh, MC Pooh, who was a member of the Dangerous Group. It's a response track to him because uh, MC Pooh had released an album called Judgment Day, where he had dissed the Dangerous Crew, Too Short, and everybody. And, you know, Too Short and Banks and everybody responded back on their respective albums. So, uh, you done effed up, man. This is Spice One's response. And the funny thing is, you know, that song, You Done Effed Up, it's, it's in reference to that scene in Minister Society. You know, when Kane was being interrogated by Bill Duke, and he, he caught him in a lie. And, you know, Bill Duke had that famous line, like, yeah, you know you done effed up. You know you done effed up. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's basically what uh Spice One says on the hook during this song, man. But yeah, America's Most Wanted, man. I really, I mean, excuse me, America's Nightmare. Uh, definitely an, another day, uh, another dope album from Spice One, man. Like I said, my I would say this is my favorite album from him. I think it's his most complete record, and, and it's been said it's been called his most influential album, man. I think a lot of people really uh, enjoy this record, man. But yeah, definitely pick it up, man. If you come across, it. you won't be disappointed. All right, so uh, next album we got on here is probably, in my opinion, Spice One's hardest album. 
and that's a 1996, uh, released in 1995. Yeah, this, yeah, this album, I gotta say, man, this is, this is Spice One's hardest album, man, because, you know, it's, there's, there's points on this album where, uh, Spice One goes into, like, horrorcore territory, man, and a lot of the music on here is, there's nothing, there's nothing, like, mellow about a lot of the music, a lot of the music on here is very dark, very dark and eerie, man, and, uh, you know, the, the first single, you know, 1996, uh, which features MC8, another collaboration between him and MC8, man, uh, he, he lets it know, man, he, he says, because everybody's dying on this album. Well, he says everybody's dying on this MF and album. And he wasn't lying, man. He he went really hard on this record, man. He All the, the production on here, everything is very dark and kind of spooky-like, man. And, I mean, you can look at the cover, man, and tell that, you know, this is this ain't going to be nothing pretty. I mean, I mean, it's Spice One, man. You know he always going to come hard. But, uh, lot, there's still a lot of good tracks on here, man, uh. Probably one of my favorite ones on here is Faces of Death, which I believe features cocaine. I'm not sure, but I think it's cocaine that that's like doing the the singing and kind of ad libs towards the end of the song. But it's got this very deep, bass heavy, mobbed out uh, song, and then you got like this kind of spooky, like uh, spooky sound effects that are going on. And then Spice One, for the most part, he's like talking and doing his reggae inspired chants and stuff like that, a uh, patois, he's doing his reggae inspired patois, and then he comes in, he does that for about like two minutes, and then he comes in on the song, and starts really spitting, really spitting some dark lyrics, man, and, you know, Funky Chickens is another one I like, man, it's, that song's about selling drugs, actually, but, uh, I like the saxophone that's implemented into it, because when you first hear it, when you first hear the saxophone, you, it kind of makes you feel like you, like Spice One about to be on some East Coast type vibe because it has a jazzy vibe and then that then that funky beat comes in that that really funky G funk inspired beat comes in and Spice One just comes on the track and just kills it man but uh, a lot of great songs on here man Dirty the second track Dirty Bay which is kind of like a twisted uh well not a twisted song but uh the hook of it is kind of Spice One singing like a twisted kind of version of interpolation of Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay but real dark, pretty dark song, man. But yeah, like I said, man, uh, this is it's a, this is Spice One's like hardest record, in my opinion. And and the interesting thing about this album uh, that I found out is that Spice One was actually on the run. He was actually on the run from the police when he was recording this record. So when he shot when he shot the videos and everything like that, he was actually on the run from the police, and he recorded this album. And then after he finished it, uh. He went on, he turned himself in. He ended up doing a few months in prison, I think. Or not in prison, but in jail for, like, I think gun possession. But I I, I thought that was interesting to find out that he was actually on the run when he was recording this album, man. But uh, a really dope record, man. Really dope record. Uh, I think I got this off of eBay not too long ago. I found it on eBay. It was actually for a reasonable price. And it's not a, it's not a bootleg copy either. Because, you know, it's a real copy. It's a real copy. Cause you know, uh, Amazon is known to be selling like those CDR versions of, of CDs now. But uh, yeah, man, definitely pick up, definitely pick up 1996, man. Like I said, it's it's real gangster, man. It's, this is Spice One's hardest album, in my opinion, at least to his hardest album of this era. But definitely go pick it up, man. It's still a great album. And uh, last but not least. We have uh, the Black Balsalini, released in 1997. Now, interesting story behind this album. This this was actually the first time I actually knew of Spice One, and it's because uh, of Mystical's Unpredictable album. You know, Mystical was signed to Job Records too, so he would have like advertisements promoting Job artists, hip hop artists. And I remember when I, when I first had that uh, album on CD. Uh, I remember seeing the advertisements for uh, Selly Sales, uh, the G-Files, E-40s. I think it was the Element of Surprise. I think it was Element of Surprise. And this album by Spice One, the Black Balsalini. 
that was the first time I'd ever heard of Spice One. That was my first time ever hearing of Spice One. I ain't I didn't know of him prior to that. But uh yeah, ninety seven, you know this year this was a year where, you know, at this point, you know, Tupac had passed away, which was one of well, you know, Tupac was one of Spice One's closest homeboys. And there's a song on here called uh, The Thug in Me, which is dedicated to Tupac. Uh, one thing I can say about uh, the Black Bossolini, I, I think that this album was the beginning of him starting to like switch it up a bit. Because, don't get me wrong, there's still some gangster rap tracks on here. That, that The gangster subject matter is still fully intact, but this time around, he's switching it up, though. He's switching it up a little bit. You know, one of the big singles from the album was Play a Man. You know, which, you know, that, that was nothing really gangster about that song. Not that it was soft, but he, Spice One switched it up. You know, it was, it was a, you could say that it was a song for the ladies. You could say it was a song that the ladies could vibe out to. And I don't know if that was his decision or Job Records. Maybe it was his decision. I don't know, because I don't think Spice One was somebody that would let the labels, like, get in his head. But I don't know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was... It, like like the song suggests, it's called Player Man. It's a real smooth, mellow song. It's got a player vibe to it, you know. And he's not really talking no gangsters, uh, no gangster stuff on there, man. He's just really talking about being a player, you know what I'm saying, and balling out and things of that nature, man. But it's a really good song, in, in any case. But he he's been, he even got a he even got a song here called I'm High, which is a weed song, which that's something that I ain't never really heard on the previous. Uh, Spice One albums. I mean, he would mention about smoking weed on the songs, but it was always in the context of some gangster subject matter. You know what I mean? He didn't have a whole, he didn't have a whole song dedicated to it. But yeah, this song was just really this album was just really different, man. It was it was him just diversifying his style. I don't really look at it like him selling out or anything because it's still a great record. To me, it was just more him like diversifying his uh his subject matter. And I saw an interesting comment when I was watching the video for Player Man. Somebody said that this album was was the bridge between, you know, his early work and what he would later go on to do with his with his uh with his later career, like what he does now. Because if you listen to the stuff he does now, uh, Spice One, his 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 subject matter is just very diversified, man. Like he has the gangster music, but he also has the stuff that you can just chill out, mob out, my ride to as well. And I think that this album was the beginning of that. But just just a lot of great music on here, man. There's a lot of great music on here. I really did the production on this album, too. Uh, it's got, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I think I mentioned it in the video before how it seemed like around 96, 97, a lot of the production, especially in West Coast hip-hop, a lot of artists were going for the more mellow, melody-infused production as opposed to the more kind of rough and raw funk vibe that was prevalent from, like, the early 90s to 95. It was like, it just seemed like in 96, a lot of artists were, like, adding a lot of more melody to their hip-hop uh, music. And this album is a great example of that. It's, it just got a more, like, kind of smooth player vibe to it. You know, you can look you can look at the cover. I mean, look at the cover. He's sitting there with his hat on, got a cane. He, he, he kind of looks, like, looks very pimpish on the album cover. Very pimpish and mobbed out, but uh, but yeah, this this was a really good album, man. This is one of my more recent uh, Spice One uh, purchases, man. I found this at a record store, I think maybe about a year ago or two, and I found it for used. So uh, I, I'm glad to have my hands on this one. Cause so uh, that's that's pretty much it on my uh, Spice One CD collection. These are these are the only Spice One CDs that I really have right now at the moment. Uh. There are about three other Spice One CDs that I hope to get my hands on. I hope to get my hands on Immortalize, uh, which was Spice One's last album for Job Records. It came out in 1999. Even though I've seen a lot of reviews on that record, and it's not highly favored among Spice One fans or the critics. A lot of people look at that album as arguably his weakest album. Uh, it's not really... It's not really uh, looked up in high regard by most Spice One fans, but I would still like to have it in my collection just to, you know, co at least complete his job records era. And then there's also two albums 
that he released independently after Jive that I would like to get my hands on. Uh, the Last Dance, which came out in 2000, and that was his first uh, independent album after he left Jive Records. And then the Spiceburg Slim album, which is another very popular uh, album that he released independently. It came out in 2002, I believe. And I actually remember around that time, because uh, I used to read the Source magazine, I remember seeing an ad for that album uh, in that Source magazine. But I, I never saw that CD in record stores, at least where I live at. Maybe in other areas, but uh, where, I from, where I'm from, I never saw it in record stores. But uh, I like to get my hands on those three records, too. And maybe I'll try to start working on getting some of the other albums he did. Uh, later on, I know he did a whole bunch of compilation albums when he went independent too. So, uh, but that's pretty much it with my Spice One CD collection uh, from 1992, 1997. And uh, you know, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And like I said, you know, if anybody who's not familiar with Spice One, definitely check out any of these uh, CDs that I showed you, because you know, I can't, I can't really speak on stuff that he's done after these albums but i can guarantee you that all these cds that i just showed you right now are classic spice one material man and uh i i listen to them on a regular basis uh anytime anytime i want to i listen to them on a regular basis but uh that's it for this video hope you guys enjoy it as always <clears throat> if you could like uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't share this video and uh as always, hope everybody has a blessed day, a blessed week, and as always, love, peace, and music. Peace out.